condensed and final look at the 2018 Triumph Speedmaster. Um, uh, have a, we'll have a quick review of it, see the good and the bad, um, and then we'll get back on the road like now and uh, go for a bit of a drive, try a few different roads. Um, and we'll look at uh, we'll look at brakes, we'll look at acceleration, we'll look at fuel economy, um, and uh, we'll try to do a pretty comprehensive review. This is the all new, as of 2018, Triumph Speedmaster, or Bonneville Triumph Speedmaster, or Triumph Bonneville Speedmaster. Um, it replaces the old one, and uh, it's an incredibly uh, nice machine. It, it's it's the, the sort of premier division of what Triumph produce. Um, it has a lot of the same features as the bobber that had come in uh, just before uh, the Speedmaster uh, and there are also one or two differences which I will take you through now. So one of the primary differences in uh, the Speedmaster compared to the bobber or the, the, the normal bobber is the 310 twin Brembo discs, uh, brake discs. The normal bobber only has a single disc, the bobber black has uh, a dual disc like this, one on each side. Both from Brembo and on the whole provides decent stopping power. Some might argue with that but I would I would say it's, it's for a cruiser it's really not bad and definitely worth the, the dual brake system. It is ABS, as indeed most modern bikes are now, but uh, it is ABS. 1200cc engine, high torque, uh, I think it's 106 newton meters of torque. Dual exhausts, one on each side. The Triumph Speedmaster has both analog and digital readouts. So, um, on the left of the digital display down here, you have uh, a fuel gauge up here where it says on for the moment. You'll actually have a, uh, a gear selector gauge and you have a trip computer which goes through your variety of all that is useful on a bike. The analog display uh, shows your, uh, your speed, quite naturally enough. There are drawbacks to this system. The major drawback to the analog display is that when you're driving at night, that the lighting up of the of the speeds at night, the light actually indicates the five mile an hour in between the speeds. So when you think you're going at 55 or rather 50, you're actually traveling at either 45 or 55. It doesn't light up the actual number, it lights up the five mile an hour in between, which is a really, really silly thing to have done. That aside, you have the traditional Triumph headlight, and as you can see here, this is the difference between day running and dipped. Some people, uh, there is a trigger on the back of the handlebar here and that on day running means you get flashability and if you turn the switch so that you're on dipped headlight the trigger then becomes dipped to full beam and it holds it so you can have both flash and dip. The fuel tank teardrop shape and only 12 litres in size. Now that's bigger than the old Triumph, uh, the old uh, Speedmaster sorry, but 12 litres will only do you about uh, 120 to 150 miles on, uh, on a single, single fill-up. So it is definitely something you need to keep uh, in mind when driving along. I have had this bike now for uh, about six months. I have done pretty much 2,000 miles and we'll go and try it on a few different roads and um, 
that sort of thing. So before we get into the riding part of the review, I just thought I'd do a quick shout out to all those people who've um, subscribed in the last, um, well, since the last video really, which is probably a couple of weeks ago now. Um, they're quite hard to, to, to do. Um, we've been in lockdown, as, as you all know, uh, around the world, um, virus, pandemic and all. So it's been, it's been a source of daily pleasure for me seeing, um, seeing a couple of people subscribing, uh, new subscribers a day. It's, it's really nice to see. So do please keep subscribing or um, can't keep subscribing, but if you haven't subscribed, then do please subscribe. It, it, um, it, it makes a, an enormous difference really. So first thing that one should mention is the engine. Um, obviously the, the primary part of any bike is the engine. So um, as long as you've got an engine and a couple of wheels, you're good to go. This is the 1200cc high torque engine that's also to be found in uh, the Bobber and the Bobber Black. Hopefully you're getting uh, some sound coming up through it because it really is uh, quite juicy. Uh, the high torque aspect of it, it's, it's 106 newton meters of torque. Um, so really plenty of it and it's all down the bottom here um, it's all down the bottom in the lower revs of the lower gears of one and two um, that doesn't mean that you're having sort of terrible vibrations going up through your feet um, you get some at high revs in both uh, well in both one and two, uh, you don't really get to high revs in three. Um, all the, they're so long the gears, so um, you know you're, you're doing motor. You can do motorway speeds in second gear. You can basically get there in first gear, but you're sec certainly second you're there in second gear. And then the ones after that are um, are, are, are you know for, for comfort, fuel economy, control, the rest of it. But we've got six six forward gears, obviously no reverse gear. We're not driving a car. It is the most comfortable bike I have ever ridden. Uh, you're you're sat in a very relaxed position, very uh, very upright. Um, some people feel that sitting upright puts a lot of pressure on your on your on your bottom. Um, and that can be the case. I mean, after I mean, you do feel it after an hour, but it's it's not bad. Um, you know, it's 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 really not it's not sort of worth worrying about, really. Um, and they do come with a variety of seats. So um, this is the 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 one that my buttocks are currently placed upon. Is the the brown quilted one which uh, with the black bike really, really looks pretty beautiful um, and, and suits the, the sort of retro classic look that's you know, so popular these days and that Triumph absolutely nail because they put in the, the technology. So you've got, the, you know, you've got your, your fuel gauge and your, um, your, your gear selector icon, your trip computers, ABS, uh, two modes, rain and road. Um, the rain mode, uh, we'll have a look at the rain mode in a second. It's, it's done with this button here, bottom right. Um, and it's called rain and road and basically uh, the rain mode just, uh, just, just takes out a bit of the torque from the bottom end. Um, and means that if you're, if you're driving around town, which we'll, we'll do in a second, it's actually a, a quite a good move because it, it takes some of the bite out of first gear and makes it a little bit smoother um, and then of course if it's raining you don't necessarily want all the torque sort of uh, underneath your hands um, so it just it just makes it just slightly more livable with in those in those um, those occasions when it's raining or you're in town or whatever it might be um, it is a cruiser bike after all so what we're looking at really is is um, a, a, a fun bike a toy but the great thing is, it's so much more than that. You can do so
so much more in the, on this bike than you might expect to with say a classic Harley Davidson or whatever it might be. If we just talk about acceleration for a moment, in theory this bike will go to 116. Okay, so first gear drops out at 52, okay, and you have to change up at 52 miles an hour. I reckon, although we'll, maybe we'll, have, we'll time it in a bit later or something, but I reckon this, this bike does naught to 60 in, I guess, four and a half seconds. Um, apologies for the wind noise. Oh, that is one thing to talk about though. If you plan on touring on this bike, then you do need to be aware that there's no wind protection. Now you can buy the uh, the windscreens and, and um, things for it, and I have one for the, the longer motorway trips, and my God, it makes a difference. Uh, you, you don't have the wind trying to sort of blast you off the back of the bike. Um, it takes it takes a lot of the a lot of the the, the sort of uh, the tiring aspect of long journeys out of out of the um, out of the equation, which is which is really important. Um, so yeah, this bike sh apparently um, goes to uh, 116 miles an hour. I have it on very good authority that it'll certainly do 100, no problem whatsoever. So I wouldn't recommend it of course, going over the speed limit. Six gears, um, so we're doing 55 in sixth gear at the moment and it just sort of purrs along. There's no, there's no sort of drama to it. Um, if I ask it what, uh, what fuel economy we're currently managing, um, it reckons 68. So 68 miles a gallon at 55 in sixth gear. I've been averaging 58 or 57.9 miles per gallon in the time that I've had this bike. So in the last, so in the last 1,700 miles, I have averaged 50, well, uh, 57 nigh on 60, um, which you know is is really good. Oh well, speaking of speed limits and stuff, oh we're out of de restriction now, but um, it has uh, cruise control. So the beauty of cruise control, not only for those long journeys, if you're thinking of touring. Um, also for for when you're um, when you're under speed restrictions, so going through a long 50 or a long bit of 30 mile an hour speed restriction, and you know you're worried about speed cameras or whatever it might be, then you can just you can pop it into cruise control, and you know no worries, no worries at all. So it's uh, it's a great little um, it's a great little feature of this bike. Second, second gear is my favourite gear. Um, it's just a, a, a joyous gear, really. It goes so high and keeps so low. You, it's just, um, and it has the best noise as well. If you're in second and you're coming down a hill and you're just using engine braking, the burbles that it gives are just glorious. Um, it's not the loudest exhaust. Uh, you could decat it and you could put um, an aftermarket exhaust on it, uh, I don't know, a Br British custom sort of um, something along those lines, but to be honest, uh, it's got a really beautiful little sound to it, so it's, it's, no, it's no real biggie. As you can hear, I mean, it's just chunking along, 40, third gear, relaxed position, these sort of beach bar surrounds, surround bars. You, I mean, you can adapt. There are so many different accessories you can get for this bike. I don't know. It's a rut. 140 different accessories you can get. Um, you can have flat bars. You can get, bo you know, your standard bobber bars on it. You can change the wing mirrors, which aren't great wing mirrors. It's a car term. You can change the mirrors on it um, because uh, you know they're quite small. Uh, you've got to position them quite carefully to see what's behind you. Um, and you can see what's behind you okay, it's seeing what's in the, the lane, if you're on a motorway it's the next door lane that you might struggle with. So you do have to keep your lifesaver looks going uh, because you do have a significant blind spot. Less so if you go for the teardrop shaped um, mirrors because they, they take, um, 
take further, um, they, they sort of have a, a wider angle. So acceleration, blistering pretty much. Um, handling, well, it's, it's, some, uh, it's a cruiser. It, it, it weighs, what, 245 kilograms dry. So you're looking at well over, um, or not well over, but a decent chunk over a quarter of a ton wet. Um, it, it's a heavy bike, but you know, it is really quite maneuverable. I mean, it's not a problem doing that. I'm not having to put any effort into that whatsoever. Um, what you have to think about slightly more is, is the, the, like the lower faster turns. It is a low bike. There's not a lot of clearance. Um, and so some people uh, complain of, of the, um, the peg scraping. Um, I think that's only really an issue if you're coming from a sports bike. I've, I've had it for six months. I've done whatever it is, nearly 2,000 miles. I haven't scraped a peg once. Now, I'm not a particularly aggressive rider, um, but then if you're driving a cruiser, who really is? If you are um, just thinking about touring with this bike, you should take a couple of things into, um, uh, into your uh, calculations. One is the fuel tank, which is only 12 litres. It'll do 120, 150 miles. Um, the fuel gauge up here um, is, uh, is, is pretty accurate actually, and the fuel warning light will come on at 30 miles. You do have about a liter and a bit once it says naught. In terms of touring, obviously you can replace, I mean, I've got the, the, the rack that comes with it and I've stuck some, um, what do you call this stuff? Velcro on, so, you know, it gives, and, and Velcro on the bottom of the bag as well. So I've got more room for, for shoving stuff on the back because um, there's not often someone sitting there. Um, you can also get these bags there, Triumph. You can get others, obviously, that are, are bigger or whatever. I think Shard do some. Um, I mean, the Shard do them for, for everything, really. Um, but just to show you what you can get in, these are, I don't know, five kilogram bags or something of dog food. Um, so they're not the biggest, but you can, with a bit of wiggling around, happily fit one, two bags of dog food on your bike. So, I mean, who, who, who wants to do more than that? So that's the dog food test, um, patented, obviously here, uh, copyright and all the rest of it. So no one do dog food tests, please, apart from me. Um, so the dog food bag tests, they fit in beautifully. Um, they don't lock on uh, drawback if you are going touring uh, and you're planning on leaving your bike somewhere you've either got to be trustworthy of your fellow man uh, or take them off and obviously taking them off is a bit of a hassle but uh, it depends how trusting you are as a person so the um, the brakes are, are ABS um, and we'll maybe uh, test those out in a sec um, the front brakes are um, dual um, dual caliper 310 mil, mil, blah, 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 blah. the uh, the brakes the brakes are 310 millimeter brembos um, two of them and just the single uh, single disc on the back um, the back one is fine I mean you wouldn't want to I mean you don't want to break too much with it um, I'm sorry but I'm not giving you a biker nod for driving that thing around um, so all that's all on the back brake absolutely fine for lower speeds now we're in town so I'm actually going to change into rain mode here to keep that because you'll notice I'm in first gear and I'm just sort of juttering about a bit so I'm just going to put it in rain mode and to select rain you put it there and it flashes down here and then you engage the clutch to confirm that that is what you want to do so I'm now as you can see down here in rain mode um, ready to go and it just eases out the clutch a bit it just means that if you're in first going through these streets you don't get quite the jolt you know so I'm not using the clutch here at all I'm just being sort of gentle with my wrist and you don't get the jerk that you would have if you were out of rain mode so if you're in road mode you'd get much more of a jerk but if you 
put it in rain it's it's much more accommodating so it's a really really nice feature not just for when it's wet but also when you're in town just going over those humps suspension um, you've got dual shock at the front single shock at the back single shock is just enough um, it is just enough yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's pretty smooth, I have to say. The, the front's beautiful. The, the back, if you've got a pillion, then you do begin to feel it in the, in the, in the single back spring. Uh, if you don't have the pillion, then um, it's not an issue. We should perhaps talk about the bad points um, of this bike, and, and there aren't many, to be honest. This is a, this is a pretty put-together bike. Um, the bad points, however, are Firstly, the range isn't brilliant. Um, if you are thinking of touring, you're maxing at 150, okay, before having to fill up. So, for me, I'd prefer it just a little bit bigger. I mean, if they could have put a 15 litre tank rather than a 12 litre tank, uh, you know, I, I think that would have made a, a, a bit of a difference. Um, I know it would have been cheaper to keep it as is because the bobber has the same tank and things, but this isn't just the bobber, is it? This is something that you're meant to be able to tour with. So having a slightly bigger tank then would have been good. Um, the headlight, uh, the headlight for me is irritating. Um, it looks good uh, and it, it's very functional in that uh, it's, it's, day, uh, it's daylight running all the time and that green um, icon there, the light there, shows you that the daylight running is on. If you want to go to dipped headlight, counterintuitively, you push this switch here on your, on your left thumb and the light goes off. The light goes off to tell you that your lights are on. That's silly. That should be how it is. Anyhow, uh, and then it has the trigger, you can't quite see it, but there's a trigger here um, and that you can, if it's on daylight running, you can flash with the trigger and if it's on um, dipped headlight, then that trigger becomes uh, uh, your full beams. So it does work quite well. It is, it's mostly bright enough. Um, I, I have started uh, vaguely looking for aftermarket additional uh, lights um, because it, it's, it's not that bright, um, but it, it, it's okay, it's fine. It's much better, much better than um, my uh, Kawasaki Vulcan, which had an abysmal light. Uh, this is this is quite a good light, um, but I, personally, I wouldn't mind it being even brighter or having having more lights on. So I'm vaguely looking at that. Um, what other aspects are bad? Uh, the pillion seat is pretty pitiful, unless your pillion has got the tiniest bottom known to man then they are going to struggle um, after a, after a, a pretty short amount of time um, you, I mean you can make life better for them with the the back the pillion backrest um, but the actual the actual seat itself for the pillions teeny um, it's not it's not great to be honest um, and if, if you're someone with a sizable bottom then it's, it's it's going to go straight up. It's going to give you the biggest bike wedgie that you've had. Um, so pretty poor uh, in terms of um, the pillion seat. The actual seat is pretty comfortable um, and you can get the, the long range one as well for added comfort and added padding on, the, on, the, on your coccyx. Um, but all the seats are good. The stock, the stock seat, this brown quilted job, um, they're, all, they're all good. Uh, the you know it's it's it is a quality product. I am nitpicking in terms of finding stuff to um, to to be upset with really. Um, what else isn't ideal? Um, yeah, the, this um, the, the the instrument panel uh, good in that it shows you lots of useful things. Your your trip, your uh, your fuel, your gears, your time, your fuel economy. I just don't think it looks that attractive. On a bike that is all metal and chrome and beautiful, you then have this plastic hooded instrument panel. Why? Why not have that in chrome as well? Or why not 
have it in the 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 the, the paint colour or whatever it might be. Instead, you get this sort of plastic cover, and it's a bit meh for such a, a premium product. Um, it's fine, you know, it doesn't bother me. Um, and and actually, I think it, it does a surprisingly good job of, of keeping the wind off you in a slight way, um, at, at lower speeds anyway. Once you get to higher speeds, then you're just being blown off unless you've got a windscreen. Um, but it's just plastic and meh. Anyhow, uh, small moan there. Other than that, mirrors don't show a lot, as we discussed, but they look beautiful, so, you know, um, can't have everything. One other thing. Um, and that is, um, the, the, although beautiful, the spoked wheels, I, I love them, but they're a bugger to clean. Um, they really are a bugger to clean. The gears on this bike are ridiculously smooth. I mean ridiculously smooth. Just for your information, uh, that was second gear all the way up to 65. It doesn't, it doesn't even sniff at it. You begin to feel some vibration. Um, as you saw earlier, first gear tops out at 52. Second gear, you're, you're, you're up to the speed limit. Since we did Salisbury Cathedral earlier, um, we can do our, our next sight of the day. So Stonehenge on your left, ladies and gentlemen. On your left, Stonehenge. First erected. Ooh. Oh, I don't know. So, a few thousand BC? Oh, that's bad. I should know that. Anyhow, perhaps someone can comment on the below and tell me how old it is. When was it put up by whoever put it up for whatever purpose? But there you go, ladies and gentlemen, Stonehenge.